Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I will restore slash refurbish an original German World War II M42 helmet. I will show you how to change or install leather for a German helmet liner. I will install a German helmet liner, I will spray a German helmet, I will camouflage the helmet and I will age the helmet. And I will hurt myself a couple times. Anyways, let me just stop talking and let's get into the video. So what I have here is an original German World War II M42 helmet. It didn't have original paint. So this helmet was, by the way, I love the historically correct sound in the background. <laughs> but like I said, it uh, didn't have the original paint. So this helmet is absolutely perfect to restore. So as you can see, I sprayed it in uh, field gray or Feldgrau. It has some nice texture right now. I just sprayed it today two times only. I decided not to really film that because I've done that many times before and you know everyone can imagine what it looks like when I spray a helmet. So this is where we are right now. I already sprayed it. We're gonna take a look on the inside. We can see a nice stamp right there in the skirt of the helmet. CKL62 and then lot number 2732. I decided not to apply decals on this helmet. Um, because, you know, if you want to use it for reenactment and you're going to apply, for instance, uh, an SS decal, you cannot use it for anything else anymore. So I just want it to be a no decal helmet because I'm going to camouflage it anyway, so you're not going to see the decal. So like I already said, it's a 62 size, so it's very small. It doesn't fit my head, it's, it's too small, but it's just a nice project. So I have three split pins that I also sprayed in the correct color, as you can see. I always use a piece of cardboard to spray the split pins. Works really well. And as you can see, the split pins are nicely textured as well. So now it's time to install the liner. However, I have a little bit of a problem. Damn it, I forgot that I had coffee waiting for me. Anyways, let me just get the liner really quick. Leave your liner outside for one second and spiders are gonna take it over. Go away. Uh, normally I buy liners uh, with very nice quality leather, but nowadays for some reason it's very hard to find um, good replica liners. The leather is very bad, so I had to buy this one. Uh, the liner band is okay, uh, it's, it's a pretty good replica. Litzmannstadt, and because it's of course a size 62 uh, shell, I need to buy a 62 liner as well, so the liner band has to be 62. And that's what it says here as well. Shell size 62 and the hat size would be 54, which again is way too small for me. It's a Litzmannstadt um, replica. Okay, that's, that's fine. Chin strap is also not the best quality, but it's okay. But this leather is, is absolutely horrible. It's, it's very, very bad. As you can see, it looks very cheap. The color also is, is just, it's white. That would not really be a problem because you can make it darker with, you know, some oils and stuff like that. But uh, the main problem is the way it just looks. Uh, it, it's very bad. Look at the way these things are applied over there. It's just very cheap and very bad. It's like mass production. Also, this little rope is just, it's a joke. Also, these little holes are very uneven, as you can see everywhere. So yeah, bad replica liner. So what I did is I actually bought some leather. Uh, this is actually a good quality. Um, so we're gonna replace this leather with this one. Ah, I love the smell of leather. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna replace that. However, there is one more problem. Like I already told you, this is a 62 um, size helmet shell, and this is a 62 size liner band. For some reason, this is not fitting inside the helmet. It's not going further. So that's kind of a problem. Also, one more problem, if it actually would fit, I would be able to um, put a split pin in right there, but not there. For some reason, this is not reaching far enough to uh, be able to put a split pin in there. So that's that's a problem. I have to uh, find a way to fix it. I probably uh, just have to hammer it in. These liners come all the way from Poland. Anyway, that's kind of a bummer, but doesn't matter. We're gonna try to find a way to uh, to fix it. So what we're gonna do right now is take the leather from this liner and replace it with this one. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. It really is a beautiful helmet though. No rust damage at all. A beautiful shell and I could buy it for a really good price. So did I need another helmet? No, absolutely not. Why did I buy it then? I, I don't know, I don't know because it was a good price. And when I see a German helmet for a good price, I just have to buy it. That's how I function. So do I have space for it? Absolutely not. <sighs> That's me. Um, like I already said, it's a very small helmet. Maybe used by Hitler Youth. But yeah, back in the day, you know, people had 
smaller heads but this is this is pretty small let me drink my coffee first i'm gonna forget my coffee all right so let me explain you a little bit about the liner bands um this is a later war liner band uh, it has a Litzmannstadt marking. So this is a replica of a liner band that was produced in a um, in a camp, in a, uh, a ghetto. And that ghetto was actually located in Poland and this liner actually comes from Poland. So that's a, that's a uh, correct replica stamp. So the liner band itself is really nice. It's made from steel, which is also correct. You have these liner bands made from different material. Early in the war, these buckles would be square shaped and would be made from aluminum. Uh, but yeah, this is correct for an M42 helmet, of course, because we are uh, making a later war helmet. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take off the chin strap. Chin strap is attached like this. It's very simple to take it off. Just take that off and there you go. And we're gonna do the same with the other side, like there, you can see it. And there you go, there's your chin strap. So here we have our liner. Basically you have two parts. You have the liner band and you have the inside part. It's basically another band which is on the inside with springs. You could also buy these things loose with the leather and you could replace it completely. But I, what I like to do also when I restore original helmets, when there's, for instance, when there's leather missing or something, you could just uh, use these little pins because these, this leather is attached with little pins on the inside of the liner. By the way, do never do this with an original liner because the value will go down tremendously. So never ever mess around with original stuff unless you're, you know, unless you know what you're doing and unless it's really necessary. But right now in this situation, you can see these little pins, it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of tight, but let me show you. It's hard to see as well with the sun because the sun is shining and it's hard to see what I'm filming on the screen. There's a little pin, see that one right there? And if you take a look at the bottom of this liner, you can actually see all these little split pins all around the liner. And we're actually gonna reuse all these little pins. So what we do is we actually do this just like a split pin it's not that hard it's not rocket science but here we go like that then you just fold this a little bit backwards and you just push them out be careful though because they're made from aluminum and they they bend pretty fast but there you go here's our little pin and we're going to use them again let me put them somewhere safe before i lose them but that is what we're going to do with every single split pin right here see we're going to do the same thing again we're just going to fold it like that then go to the other side it's also easier to get rid of this rope. This is a very, very bad replica rope. So I'm just gonna get rid of it like this. There we go. And pull it out. Just your hand through it like that. Just do it like this. And be very careful because these liner parts, they are extremely sharp. I just stopped counting the times that I cut myself sometimes really deep. So just be careful because it's, it's, it's you know, it can really hurt and it can really cut you pretty deep. Be sure to have your tetanus shot when you're working with rusty liners and stuff like that, because yeah, you don't want to cut yourself. So right now it's kind of easy, but it really depends how tight a liner band is because you know that there's a lot of variety in that. So it really is a beautiful day to mess around with a German helmet liner. The sun is shining. There is no cloud in the sky. Absolutely perfect. So again, just like that and then push and then grab it like that. And here you go. We did five so far. And as you can see, we have a couple more right there so i will spare you some time and we'll be right back as soon as i did them all okay so as you can see we have all the pins out here they are so here i have the leather what's going to happen now well it's very simple just whoop, pull it out there you go i'm not going to throw it away because maybe i can use it for something else but no this is trash right here we have our liner band and here you can now definitely see how this liner band is put together this is where the chin strap is fixed and here you can see there is some movement works with springs and these springs you can see them over there they go inside there it's kind of hard to show you but let me just pull this apart a little bit there you can see it and yeah replacing a uh, liner band on the inside could be a little bit dangerous for your fingers because like i already said it's it's really sharp but i've done that before so but that's not what we're gonna do we are actually going to put this leather uh, inside of this part actually this this is not correct what it's saying here because this is saying 58 so this leather was actually for a uh, size uh, 64 helmet but this is a 62 and it still seems like it's barely fitting so the stampings on these liners are not really correct or they're not they're not yeah they don't really fit anyways uh, it doesn't really matter uh, we're gonna make it fit at least that's what i hope 
So, by the way, these ropes are also not correct. This is not what original German helmet liner ropes look like, even though they say on websites that it's exact replicas. They even sell them on some websites for almost five euros for just a piece of rope, which is just a scam in my opinion. This is, that's just, why would you sell a piece of rope for five euros? It's doable, it's okay, but it's it's not exactly the same. So I wouldn't call it exact replica and then charge like five euros for it. It's, it's way too much. So um, what we're gonna do now is, well, there's a bee here. Okay, so of course this leather goes like this, like the inside, because this is the way the liner goes inside the helmet. This is gonna be the back because that's where the split pen goes. So it goes like this. This is gonna be the back of the liner because of the stitching, but actually a lot of times you see with original helmets that even the stitching is on the side or on the front. So, you know, sometimes it happens, but officially the, 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 this, this part where the stitching is should be on the back. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put it in between the liner um, ring, I would say, and the liner band, and then we're gonna push it down. And then we're gonna put all the things in that. Let me just, instead of talking, just show you what I mean. We're gonna put this between the liner band, which is a little bit difficult because it's pretty tight. It makes it harder because I'm trying to uh, give you a good angle, but you know, that's kind of hard sometimes. Uh, but you want this stitching over here, the stitching, because this stitching is actually what keeps this here. Uh, you want this stitching just to be underneath this rim. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna push it in and I'm gonna show you really quick what I mean. We're just gonna start with one pin because if you have that pin in, it's gonna be easier to actually do the other ones. But it has to be a little bit lower than it is right now. Here we go. How We just want one pin in for sure right now because if you have one pin in, it's gonna be easier to do the rest. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but it's deep enough in there right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this and just push a little hole through there and then take it off. So now I see a little dent right there, so I know where it is. So then I can just push it through, be careful with your fingers once again, and just make a hole all the way through, as you can see right there. Here we have one of those pins. You just push them through, just like that, very simple. Your thumb right there, and then you can just grab the liner band and just push it through this little hole that I showed you before. Normally it's easier, but I'm making it harder for myself because I'm trying to get the good angle. I hope you can see it. And then like that, and then you're done with the first one. Here we go, there it is. And you just continue to do this. Look, now it's easier to push the rest between the liner band. And you just continue doing the same thing. There you can see it. You make a little hole right there. You just push a little hole through, you pull it out, and you see this little dent right there in the leather. And then you know where to make a hole like this. Always be careful. You grab another one of these little pins. You push it through again. Use your thumb like this. Grab it like that. Push it through. Then, whoop, there you go. And just continue doing this all around the helmet. And the chance is pretty big that you will cut yourself at some point. Be careful. <sighs> okay, so finally, after some work, uh, I managed to get the leather in. And now all we have to do is push it down. And now we have a correct liner, which doesn't look cheap anymore. But as you can see, there is almost no space between the two rings anymore right now. Normally there is a little bit of space, but that's, you know, you can see this is not correct at all. It says 58, this should be for a 64 liner, but this is a 62 liner and it barely fits. So I don't know what they're doing. They have to change uh, a few things because these, these stampings are not correct. Anyway, um, we have the, the leather in right now. It looks really nice. Looks like a crown. <laughs> now we're gonna see if we will be able to get the liner band inside of the helmet. So if not, we did everything for no reason. So yeah. Okay, so the next step would normally be placing the liner inside of the helmet. Normally that's never a problem, but as I already told you, it's not fitting. I think it's like one millimeter too big or something <laughs> because look, the front fits like this, but then the back won't fit. And that's really annoying. So I'm thinking, what part should I put in first? Right here, you can see what I mean with the place where the split pins go, right there. You can see that's where a split pin usually goes. And if we take a look on the other side, there is not enough space. 
So that's kind of a problem. I think I have to drill that out. But the first problem right here now is how are we going to get this in? I think I should just start with the back and then maybe hammer it in on the front because I think this is a weak spot. So if I put this one in first and I'm going to hammer here, I'm not sure if that's going to end well. I don't think so. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm first going to, I'm, I'm going to do the back and then I'm going to do the rest. So this is how the split pins work. You have these split pins and then you have these washers. The split pin goes through the helmet and through the helmet liner or the liner band and then it goes through the washer and then you, you fold it. That's also always a little challenge. It's not so easy, especially when the liner is tight like this because of course we placed the leather and we have to pull it backwards in order to place it there. So see what happens. Okay, so let's start. You want this to be even as you can see right there. And then you just push this through. I'm really sorry if the angle is not gonna be okay. There we go. It's really tight. It's really tight. It's not so easy. Here we have the washer. And that's also one of those problems. Most of the times they bend a little bit, so it's really hard to make them fit again. So you need some strength to hold this back while you put the washer in. It's not so easy. Here we go. And as I already suspected, it's not gonna fit again. So you have to fold it a little bit like that and then try to do it again there we go it's so hard <laughs> it's not easy that's for sure there we go and it's in I have to change it a little bit more because it's not as tight as I want it to be ow it's not as tight as I want it to be but that's because the liner doesn't fit the way it should that's kind of the problem right now so what we're going to do is we're going to try to try to force it in and the only way to do that is to actually hammer it in i'm afraid this this is so this liner is so off for some reason if it's even going to go in i'm not so sure if it's ever going to fit it's completely bending as you can see but this is the only way we can get it in right now this is not the normal way trust me no, I'm destroying the liner band right now at this point. Okay, so I've never been so irritated before while installing a liner because this is just, it's not fitting. It doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't matter how much I hammer on it. It's just, it's not gonna fit. 62 liner, 62 shell, and it's just not fitting. I mean, this is, this is just annoying. If you, if you order a 62 liner, which is in size 62, it should fit. It's not fitting. So what I'm doing right now is just I'm damaging the liner because it's going to be or this side or that side, but it's like a millimeter or something too big and it's not fitting inside of this original helmet shell. So they don't have their sizes right. It's just not fitting. It's not fitting. It's like trying to fix a, a triangle into a square. It's, it's, it's not going to get in. I'm only getting more angry by the minute right now at this point so what a waste of money all right so i have a lot of patience but i've been trying for over an hour to get this liner inside of this helmet and it's not gonna fit i did a lot of work to put this leather in and i did everything i could to get this liner in but it's it's not gonna fit and after trying for more than an hour and hurting your fingers all the time. You're getting really mad, so I smashed it really hard against the wall. I threw the liner against the wall and I smashed it onto the table because my, my patience, my patience was, was up. So I'm a little calm down now, but it's really frustrating. So you can see the liner is completely damaged. I have a lot of patience, but this was just enough because I got it all the way from Poland and it just doesn't fit. It's really annoying when you buy something and it says 62 and it should fit and it just doesn't and you do all this work for for nothing so that's really annoying this, this should be the easiest part put the liner in and done it always happens like that just goes in and but it just doesn't fit i need to find another way to uh to get this liner inside but i already smashed it against the wall historically correct Okay, so I decided to break these uh, pop nails here at the back and try to figure something out this way and probably drill some holes. I will be back with you as soon as I have this fixed. Okay, um, I completely gave up on this liner. It's never gonna fit. I tried to drill a hole, but it's just not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So uh, I resprayed the helmet on the inside because um, the paint was damaged. I, as you can see, I smashed it pretty bad because I really lost my uh, patience and I just smashed it against the wall and against the table. <laughs> It was completely flat. But that's, it's so annoying when you're looking forward to do something and you, you do 
actually uh, order the right size and you get the right size or well that's what it's saying 62 and it just doesn't fit that's really annoying and I've been trying this for like two hours or more and at some point you're just gonna lose your patience and you're gonna smash things so that's exactly what happened I will try to buy another liner which is actually too small which will probably be okay then because it's too small then it's probably gonna be okay or maybe it's gonna be too big again I don't know what's gonna happen but I'm gonna buy another liner which is gonna be smaller than this one and um, see if that one will fit and I'm gonna take off the leather again I'm gonna do the whole process again for now today this day ah enough 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 all right guys it's a new day i'm outside again and i ordered a new liner <laughs> because i smashed the previous one into the wall and into the table anyways as you can see i have a new liner actually this is a size 60 should be 62 but this is a size 60 and it seems like we can work with this so that's okay it's it's gonna fit for sure um as you can see this is actually already the the right type of leather so that's nice we're gonna get rid of this little rope again because this is this is just <laughs> by the way my fingers are still hurting from working with that liner a couple days ago as you can see it fits inside of the helmet there's gonna be a little gap between uh the liner band and the the helmet itself but that's okay this is okay and this one is as well and with the other one it was not so there was definitely something wrong with that one yeah we can work with this this is nice it would look like this that's good it's pretty small so it works a little bit different than I used to do. Oh, there it goes. Obviously no History Secrets video without cutting myself. All right guys, so it wasn't easy because like I already said, this liner was extremely small and it was pretty hard to, um, to install the liner. But after a lot of work, it's finally in. It looks pretty good, as you can see. It obviously doesn't fit my head because it's, it's way too small. The liner is now size 60, which is very small but the helmet itself it looks very very nice i'm very happy the way it looks right now at this point something that <laughs> something that i just noticed um was something in the liner over here look they should be all loose flaps right but look at this it's together it's stuck together see that's okay though it happened with original liners as well but it seems like i'm liner cursed or something i don't know what's going on but look look at this but it's okay, it's, it's fine. It, it, like I already said, um, especially because it's a small liner, you know it happened, so it's fine. And it's a late war helmet, M42, so um, you know, they're rushing things in the factories and stuff. So uh, actually, uh, it's, it's another uh, Litzmannstadt um, ghetto liner band. Uh, and I actually have one, an original one, which also has some errors. So, you know, it, it fits it, it's nice. The helmet, as you can see, looks very nice. This is what a brand new German helmet would look like back in the day when it just came right out of the factory. All right, so here we have our famous restoration table and here we have our German helmet. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a three-tone normally camouflage helmet. Uh, first we're going to spray Dunkelgelb, then we're going to spray Feldgrau and then some mud brown. After that, we're gonna make it live worn and stuff. But right now, we're just gonna spray it. So let's have some fun. I love this part. Look, look how small this helmet is. Look. Well, actually, my hands are pretty big as well. So <laughs> I don't know what it is. All right, let's go. Normandy camouflage. Okay, so as you can see the first layer has been sprayed and obviously it's gonna take a little while to um, To be dry completely, but we're not gonna wait because you know, we're in the field We're camouflaging a helmet, so we don't care if it's dry or not. We need to move on fast So we're just gonna continue spraying as you can see it's a nice thick layer of Dunkelgelb Especially when it's uh, nice and worn. It's gonna look really nice right now. Of course, it's still shiny. You can see me Hi, it's gonna disappear soon just gonna continue that to the other side of the helmet as well and here a little bit here let me show you what I did as you can see this is a nice camouflage pattern right here 
nice and simple. That is really cool. I love it. And now there's only one thing left to do, and that's use a little bit of brown. Just a little bit of brown here and there. Let's take a closer look. That is really, really nice. Especially when it's dried up completely. Wow, see the different colors now? Brown, yellow, green. And when these colors are going to fade, it's gonna look really nice. Look at that split pin right there. You can still see the texture. It's really, really good. Okay, we're back outside. It actually started raining and now it stopped again. So we're lucky, I guess. But this is what the helmet looks like right now. It's still not completely dry. And obviously we're still not done. Just wanted to give you a look right now. This is what it looks like. Of course, it's starting to rain again right now. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a brush and I'm actually gonna brush the helmet. So this is what I'm doing right now, just simply brushing the helmet. And this is just a soft brush. Well, it's not really soft, but you know, it's not a steel brush or something like that. Just a simple brush. It's really easy right now at this point to actually damage the helmet, but that's okay because that's actually what we want. We're not gonna do too much yet. Look, for instance, right now we have a little scratch right there because the paint is still soft, but that's okay. I decided to place the camera inside because I don't want raindrops to get inside of my microphone. Perfect. For now, we're not done. Okay, so it's raining. That's kind of annoying because I want to do something outside. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just H the helmet a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. See, the paint is still soft, so the scratches are going to be pretty deep. But that's okay. Look, I just want to age, see, it a little bit. Later, when the paint is more dry, I'm gonna age it a lot more. But look, you just do things like that. You want it to look natural. Look, you're getting scratches like these. Oops, really simple things like just dropping it down. Oh, Ludwig, close, ha ha ha, oh, 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 oh. Things like that. Heinz, come with me. Ow, ha ha, Reinhard, guck mal hier. Oh, los, Rudolf, oh. Ob Sturm, oder Schneid. Oh, diese. Oh, oh. Giffel. Ha. Hol. Sturmgeschütz. Oh. Okay, there we go. That's enough for now. Like I already said, later we're going to do a lot more. But you get these natural scratches. So basically, what you have to do is just play around as a little kid. That's all you have to do. And they will get very nice natural scratches. It's getting really rainy, so we're going to go inside and do the rest probably tomorrow. Right now, I want to work on the liner a little bit. Yeah, um, no. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is make this leather look a little more worn and older. There are a lot of things you can use. You can use shoe polish, you can use uh, different types of oils. Um, usually use that for my guns. What I always like to use is cooked linseed oil. Normally I would use a brush for that, but at this moment I don't really have a brush, so I'm just gonna use my bare hands. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the same with the chin strap. Actually, this chin strap was installed wrong on the other liner. As you can see, it was installed this way, but it should actually be folded the other way around. Same as this part, it's wrong. So here we have the helmet and here we have the linseed oil which is not gonna open for some reason. Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, are we gonna have this problem now? Oh, there we go, finally. Huh. So what I'm gonna do is this, look at that. You don't want this on your carpet or anything. Here we go, just completely do this and it's gonna look nice and dark. Here I have some shoe polish. Actually, the shoe polish is completely dried out, but that's fine. The best way to make a helmet look worn is of course by actually using it for years. I have a lot of helmets that I use for a long time and they look absolutely amazing. They look like they're original. But what we're doing now is basically just speed up that process a little bit. Just, you know, this is basically what you have to do, just especially at the front because that's where your forehead is. Just do this and it's gonna look nice and worn. Also, I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Okay, here we go. Let me just do this and then clean the inside a little bit. Ow, that's my hand. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, how, how even? Oh, that's a nasty wound. Oh. Let's try to ignore it and let's just continue. I mean, why not? 
Oh, actually, blood. Awesome. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. Oh sh**. This is actually pretty bad. I managed to fix my finger really quick with a band-aid and we're gonna continue. Stuff like this is always happening to me. What happened even? I already warned you before, but these liner bands are extremely sharp, so be careful. I'm a professional finger cutter, so. <laughs> oh, be careful, be careful. And at the same time, I'm cutting myself all the time, but yeah. Anyways, my liner looks pretty damn good. Look at that. Right now, it looks like it's been worn for quite a while, see? Sometimes after doing this, I also make the liner completely wet just with water. You're getting really nice effects. I actually have to admit that sometimes I take a helmet with me under the shower and I wear it like that so it gets wet. It's kind of strange, but you know, forget what I just said. Oh my God, look at the quality of this chin strap. First of all, like I already said, it was placed wrong. But look, this is just, what is this? It's just broken right here. It feels more like it's paper. It's really cheap quality. I'm soaking the chin strap in some water right now to make it soft and see what's gonna happen. But the quality is, <laughs> it's, it's really cheap. All right, so I took the chin strap out of the water and um, put some oil on it. It already looks better. It's definitely not the best quality uh, chin strap, but this is all I have at this moment. At least now they're installed the right way, as you can see. Look, it's still really easy to just scratch the paint with your fingers, so. Yeah, we definitely have to wait a little bit more before we can age the helmet completely. What I'm doing right now is make these holes a little bigger so it looks more used. I'm doing that with this little pin. I just uh, push it through like that and I just wiggle it around to the front and to the back a little bit so it looks like it's more used. Okay, as you can see, I am underground right now in the basement which looks like a bunker. Lots of times, Germans were walking inside of bunkers or in houses and they would hit their head on the ceiling. And then you would get these white spots, as you can see, and some spider webs in this case. But look, if you do this, la la la, ah, what's this los? Hello, ah. It's gonna look very nice. My bird likes this sound. Stahlhelm. Well, here we are again. I woke up this morning with a terrible headache and I was like, wow, this is the perfect day to age this helmet a little more. So, um, as you saw, I'm insane. So I showered with this helmet a little bit. The liner and chin strap are still a little bit wet from yesterday because I showered with the helmet. As you can see, we now have the correct rope. Um, it's still way too clean, so we're gonna make that a little bit more dirty. And now the paint is actually really hard, so. That's nice. Just gonna age it a little bit more, especially this uh, this little rope right there. It's way too bright. Stahlhelm. Stahlhelm. The messenger sound was at the exact moment I hit the tree. That was pretty funny. Huh. I'm gonna use a little bit of this rust to age the liner rope here. Look, see? Look, this is a perfect way to do it. Just make it wet, get some rust, and here you go. Of course, you can keep continuing this as much as you want. Uh, depends on how worn you want uh, the helmet to look. And of course, there's also a difference between um, making the helmet look like it's 80 years old. I mean, it is an original helmet so it is 80 years old but I mean um, if you want it to look like it's been you know found in the attic or you want it to make it look like it's been combat worn and that's what we are doing we're not gonna make it rusty or anything we're gonna make it combat worn obviously the top of the helmet is going to be the most worn uh, because you know you put your helmet down like that you pick it up again and then you get scratches uh, you bump your head against the ceiling. Yeah, just stuff like that. So uh, also places that are uh, worn a lot are the sides over here because of the chin strap. Uh, grabbing the helmet like this. Um, the liner also gets dirty because of your forehead, of course. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use very, very fine sandpaper uh, to work a little bit more on the sides and over here in the edges. And um, then we're done. This is extremely fine sandpaper. You don't even really see it. Uh, it's really fine, so just gonna make it wet a little bit and then just do this. Okay, look, so I can assure you as soon as we use this right now, the helmet is going to have that classic 
three-tone Normandy camouflage look. Look at that. See? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Look. That is typical Normandy camouflage. And the paint is worn off. Look at that, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. A typical three-tone Normandy camouflage helmet right here. I'm gonna let the uh, liner dry. And I'm gonna apply some linseed oil on the outside of the helmet to give it that shiny look. It already looks amazing like this. I mean, it's basically already done, but I'd just like to do one more thing. Obviously, if you're making a helmet like this, you can, you can do as you please. I mean, this is already amazing. I really like it. All right, guys, here it is, the final result. This is what our Normandy camouflage helmet looks like right now. You can see all the little scratches, like it's been used many times on the battlefield. Paint completely worn off. It's nice and shiny. It's exactly what paint would look like if you would use it every single day. It's gonna be smooth like this. Look at that. The liner is still a little bit wet from yesterday. It's gonna look even better when it's completely dry. Of course, the liner is gonna look even better and better if you would actually wear it. But like I already said, it's a very small size, so I cannot wear this helmet. But yeah, there are a lot of possibilities to even age the liner more. Um, but right now, I'm just gonna let it dry like this. And uh, I'm really happy with the result. It looks amazing. Definitely looks like a uh, nice combat-worn Normandy camouflage helmet. My fingers still hurt, I have cuts all over my fingers, I have paint inside of them right now. I still have a terrible headache, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you could learn something from it. Um, as you can see, we now have a beautiful M42 camouflage helmet right here, which I cannot wear because it's too small, but it doesn't matter, it's a beautiful display piece. Or maybe someone in the future will wear it for a reenactment. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment if you have any questions. Feel free to ask. And subscribe if you want to see more videos. Oh, such a terrible headache. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Stahlhelm! Oh!